tell you uh, that, uh, uh, tell your viewers, uh, we are concluding the first uh, uh, topic. I know there's still a lot to talk about, but subsequently, yeah, uh, we are going to continue analyzing in our subsequent uh, programs and uh, time for us to dive to the second uh, topic, uh, which is uh, taking focus on the uh, regional elections that will be holding in Russia, you know, uh, for, for a while now, the Russia-Ukraine uh, 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 crisis have been actually uh, making waves, and of course, the effect of such uh, we see <coughs> in uh, September 20. 22, uh, there was a referendum where we see, uh, saw, I beg your pardon, saw uh, uh, citizens of, of some regions uh, voting uh, overwhelmingly uh, to join uh, the Russian Federation. And to, uh, it is worth noting uh, that uh, this uh, September 2023 uh, regional elections will be held in this uh, Occupy regions of Donetsk, Kherson, Luhan, and uh, Zaporizhia. Uh, that is the occupied uh, areas, and which will hold this September in Russia. And uh, according to some pundit, this election uh, come or aims uh, to bring about uh, stability and restore a sense of self-governance to the local population. And of course, it therefore represents a special event uh, in uh, Russia. So let's kick off this with you, Yulia Burke. What do you have to say about the regional elections in these uh, occupied regions? Of course, what are the expectations as the days for the vote are drawing closer? Well, I would say that the key expectation from this um, uh, from this event, uh, the regional elections uh, in those um, uh, territories, uh, that would be definitely answering the question if those territories are occupied or liberated. And that is the core of what is happening there at the moment, because basically, if you look at it at the uh, bigger picture, what you see is that uh, uh, well, basically, Ukraine is what uh, Russia could have been if that was under uh, major colonial pressure, right? Because the agenda, uh, the way it was being implemented, the mechanisms uh, through which uh, the regime was changed back in 2014 in Ukraine, uh, they all show the typical uh, handbook um, of, uh, you know, well, generally speaking, the West and the global elites. So um, uh, that was uh, exactly the reason uh, why uh, the conflict uh, uh, broke out uh, back in 2014 and uh, the happenings of uh, 2022, which is the beginning of the uh, Russian special military operation, was a consequence of the fact that the Minsk agreements uh, were not uh, followed and uh, the documents that were signed uh, by the representatives of Ukraine and it was uh, supposed to be supervised by the four uh, by the four leaders of uh, European countries nothing was happening and we already saw those leaders admitting admitting that the Minsk agreements were only signed uh, to give more time to the uh, military-industrial complex of the West to supply uh, Ukraine with weapons and to fuel this uh, war between uh, basically, you know, very um, close uh, people, right? I mean, the uh, the people of Ukraine and Russia, uh, and it's not just something cultural, but it's uh, something that uh, can be proved by the fact uh, that many have relatives in those two countries and it's hard to separate the two into two peoples right so uh, the key question that would be answered during this happening is uh, again if those territories were occupied or liberated which is uh, brought back to uh, to the uh, let's say governance system and which is more important the value system the cultural system that is closer to the people but again, here we need to consider that it's an active war zone in all of those, and uh, people would be uh, trying to both organize and take part in the election, which is to vote, um, literally speaking, under the bullets and with constant shellings that have never stopped in some of those regions since 2014. So um, it's been nine years of the conflict. Um, there were different approaches used. Uh, last year, there was the referendum according to which uh, people chose to uh, 
uh, to join the uh, Russian Federation. But it's clear that, uh, and I think it's one of the most important things, uh, you know, that regardless of, uh, regardless of, um, uh, you know, what's uh, what's happening around, the the key uh, thing that people need is basic security, basic stability and making sure that uh, you know they can uh, live their life uh, in a calm and peaceful way right so uh, we will see people voting and sharing their um, their views on how they see it um, even possible